okay we're rolling right into Oma Gang as you see there's the sign and we're coming right through the gate oh baby <laughs> here we are Brewery Oma Gang visit number two So this line is, I mean, it increased our production capacity by at least five or six fold. Wow. Good. How much do you put out of here per day? Uh, Usually we'll package about 140 hectoliters per day. It used to take us three days to do that. Right. Uh, we actually now, we've got the filler kind of throttled down so we can still hand load of bottles and pack bottles, but uh, it's, it's capable of going a lot faster, but um, while we blew out this wall, so we can get automatic uh, depalletization and palletization to uh, um, be able to realize the full speed of that line. like citrus note. Yeah. We used uh, Strissel Squawk, French Strissel Squawk hops. Yeah. Um, and then the French Jail yeast, not our, not the only game, house yeast. So, yeah. a little bit different. It's uh, more of a fruity yeast strain, not so phenolic. Yeah. I mean, what's unique uh, about the Art of Darkness? Well, I mean, the different malts and, and the high percentage of wheat and some, some, some different ways like a dark wheat malt and a, like a de-bittered black malt, so it's like a de husk so it takes away a lot of that stringency. Um, so I'd say that's what makes this kind of unique. 
some of the ideas come from him, some of them come from the brewers, some of them come from me, like the Spirit of Guard was, was my beer. Uh, but often even, we'll start with an idea and then we'll taste it, you know, a test brew and then we may tweak the recipe depending on what we want to do with it. But how big are your test brews? Um, they're about 15 gallon batches. Do you put them on tap here to test them? Or? No, no, we just have them, you know, in the, the brewers and myself and the lab guy. We just have them to taste them. So, like, on average, do you, do you get it the first time or, like, is it. Usually needs at least a little minor tweaking, you know. Although some, some of the brewers will come up with stuff that they home brewed before, so they pretty much have it dialed in, so we might go right to press. I mean, what? I mean, how do you scale up the batch? Like from a homebrew recipe, like five, ten gallons. Well, um, I basically, when I do the production batch, I, I formulate everything from scratch. But I'll use like the percentages of the different ingredients that they use. Oh, okay. But it's not a, so. It's not a direct arithmetic, you know, scale up. Especially hop uh, spices sometimes we find like uh, the efficiency, extraction efficiency on our production system seems to be higher than on our patch system. So like we tend to use a little bit less you know, per unit volume on our production system than our test system. A lot of it is just kind of getting a feel for it, you know, how to different. And one question I had about hops here is that, like, of course you're brewing like all the Belgian styles, but like, do you use all like European hops, or is it like a mixture of American and European? I mean, we're, most of our main brands are driven by our workhorse hop is Styrian Golding, because we get that directly through Dubel. They 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 have contracts with farmers in Slovenia, so, so we can get a very good price on that. Um, we also use a fair amount of uh, holler towel or spulker select. It's like a sauce type, Czech sauce type hop. But, um, you know, we've really been experimenting with uh, some different American varieties. Like, uh, we're going to be doing a one off beer for a special client, and it's going to use some Bravo hops. Uh, we've used Australian Galaxy hops. Um, and for some of our bittering, we use like a, a Columbus, uh, which is an American, you know, high alpha. Mm -hmm.